On show 453, Rivian's $500 million investment, Model S and X go longer, and electric Porsches are coming. Well, those stories and many, many more coming up on today's podcast. Uh, hello, my name is Martin Lee. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the show. It's EV News Daily. It's your Wednesday, 24th of April edition, and... What I do is I go through all the EV stories, if you're new to this podcast, by the way, to try and pick out the essential ones to save you time, because there's so much going on, so much positive stuff in, in the world of EVs. Now, due to when I record this in the UK and the time difference of eight hours to uh, Pacific time in the States, I either stay up very, very late and wait for the Tesla results, or I record this now and they'll be on tomorrow's, so... They'll be on tomorrow's. Uh, so Tesla's Q1 financial results will be on tomorrow's show. Expectations are tempered, says Simon at Tesla Arty. For Tesla this quarter, the company's was uh, less than expected production delivery numbers in Q1, particularly S and X, and deliveries fell by around 30% compared to the end of last year. Total production numbers down by about 12%. Lots of cars in transit heading to China, heading to Europe. Uh, so that is the deal with that. Before we get into the news, thank you very much to New Patreon patrons and existing patron uh, chipping in a bit more which i don't know i'm i'm always speechless when this happens james aka free jewel says i'm super busy with my day job i don't get much time to catch up with ev news but nothing beats the podcast oh thank you james is a new executive producer uh, up from producer level thank you so much on patreon hello to new executive producer derek likes derek joined up a couple of days ago and i've been saving up a couple of these mentions uh, so thank you derek for your patience i'll put your name in the show notes along with all the exec producers and above and producer new producer of the show simply it simply came through on the patreon system as samuel so samuel i haven't got your surname but if you want me to say it and thank you properly just let me know but the patreon system just spat out your first name uh, and normally it gives me both so i don't know what's happening there but thank you so much right thank you as always to myev.com for helping make this show if you're in the usa if you want to buy and sell evs if you want to learn about them as well if you want to see what a marketplace looks like that's only evs check out myev.com this is huge news today. Rivian just became a reality, says Inside EVs. And that's a heck of a statement to write. Rivian just became reality. With a major investment from the US sales leader in trucks, says Eric Loveday. For InsideEVs.com, following the major investment made by Amazon, Ford has announced $500 million of investment into Rivian. Now, Rivian is the maker of the R1T, that's the pickup truck, and the R1S, that's the SUV, is solely focused on... On EVs, so no hybrids or anything there. They're a pure EV maker for now, limited to a truck and an SUV. In the future, more models are planned. An additional note on the investment is the companies have agreed to work together to develop an all-new next-generation battery electric vehicle for Ford. It's going to be for Ford's growing EV portfolio. It's going to use Rivian's skateboard platform. If you're new to the podcast, what do we mean by that? Right, uh, the skateboard platform is what we mean by when you design an EV, from the ground up. You literally start with a rectangle of batteries that you put the four seats on top of, or the however many seats on top, and a wheel and a suspension on each corner. So when we first started seeing EVs being made all those years ago, they were retrofitting them into the cars. And, and that meant, well, stuffing some batteries under the rear seats and stuffing some batteries where this would have gone and that would have gone. If you could design an EV from scratch, you have a flat battery pack, completely flat underneath as well. But And they call it the skateboard design. Anyway, if you're new to us, hopefully we're bringing you up to speed. Uh, and if you listen for a long time on the podcast, you'll know what I talk about. So that's what Rivian have done. That's what big EV makers uh, or big automakers who are moving into EV with specific platforms are doing. Uh, it's neither right nor wrong. Benefits, pros and cons and all that. So uh, it's, it's largely the way that uh, Tesla's always made their cars. So Ford are going to use Rivian's platform for this. Ford has uh, got existing plans already for their portfolio of pure battery electric cars. They've confirmed two key full electric cars. There is the Mustang-inspired crossover. I don't know what that means. It's inspired by the Mustang, and it's got that crossover style, which is sort of smaller than an SUV. Anyway, look forward to seeing that. That's 2020. I mean, it's next year. And a zero-emissions version of the F-150 truck. So I wonder what they want the Rivian tech for. 500 million to buy into Rivian. In the grand scheme of things, is small change. I know it's not. It's mad to say that about half a billion pounds, but it's small change. 
But also, I think this is amazing for Rivian when you think they've not actually made anything. I mean, I've seen some pictures of Rivian at the auto shows and they've got a rope around it. So I've seen some some auto reviewers be allowed to get up close, like press days and stuff. But generally, that would say they've got two cars, right? They tell the journalists, don't touch this. Don't, don't open that door. It's flimsy. And so you can, but you can trust the journalist. You can, you can give them conditions of which they can film or report. If you don't do this, don't mention that. At the auto show with the general public, rope around it, security guards, you're kept well away. You can see it, but well, you can't touch it. That tells me they got two cars. Now they look. In reality, yeah, they've probably got some more. But I'm being slightly flippant. They got two cars. It's not like they're making a hundred a week. Not like they're making. A thousand a month. That's not bad, is it, to get five hundred million dollars of investment for a car that you know they say that oh they've got the truck and the SUV. Well, they haven't really. They've they've got a good idea. Uh, they got some cars that have been seen in YouTube videos with nice fancy drone flyovers. I'm not raining on their parade. Just tr- sometimes try to be, uh, you know, maybe. Little voice of reason. The Verge says on this story, Ford has decided what kind of vehicle it's going to build. Ford has decided, let me (laughs) make sure I'm clear, Ford has decided what kind of vehicle it will build on Rivian's platform, but it declined to specify. Just two months ago, Rivian announced $700 million of investment by led by Amazon, not solely, but in in a round that was led by Amazon. Rivian was in talks with GM, but they backed out of a potential exclusivity deal. Engadget reports that Rivian stressed it would remain an independent company, but it did acknowledge the Ford's automotive president, Joe Hinrichs, will be joining the board of directors. And CNBC looked at the specs of the R1T and the R1S. Both trucks have 754 horsepower. Both trucks can go from zero to 60 miles an hour in three seconds. They have a top speed of 125 miles an hour, says CNBC. Well, and again, again, I'm not being Mr. Pessimistic. They will, when they finally make them, they will go 0 to 60 in three seconds. They will have a top speed of 125 miles an hour. They don't at the moment. Anyway, uh, they also have, they will have battery capacity options of 105 kilowatt hours, which can do 240 miles on one charge. Then there's a 135 kilowatt hour pack and 180 kilowatt hour pack, which they say will do 410 miles. Miles, they say, will do that. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I'll put a link to those stories in the show notes, by the way. Uh, Let's get on to Tesla. A new Tesla Model S and Model X. They can now drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco on a single charge, is the headline that TechCrunch led with today. They announced that they've extended the range of its Model S to 370 miles, Model X to 325 on a single charge. Both models now have the newest drive unit technology, Tesla said, combining an optimised permanent magnet synchronous reluctance motor, silicon carbide power electronics and improved lube. Uh, More cooling, better bearings, gear designs, the new cars can be 93% or more efficient, Tesla said in a statement. And this is what they do. This is what Tesla do. They don't release, they don't tend to say, right, it's time for a whole new Model S. They just make incremental upgrades. That's what they. That's their style. That's what they do. Everyone's been saying there's an upgrade, a massive upgrade coming. And Elon keeps saying there isn't. Maybe we'll hear something on this, the earnings call where he'll give something away. However, maybe they'll ask about it again. However, this is an incremental update. Little tweak here, little tweak there. 370 miles is more than a little tweak, though, for the Model S. That is proper, proper distance, isn't it? Wowzers. Wade Malone over Inside EVs reports that along with the upgrade to the range, getting charge into the Model S and X will take less time than ever before. If you plug them into the new Supercharger V3 many of those around at the moment the vehicles will charge up to 200 kilowatts on the older supercharger stations they can still go up to 145 kilowatts charge speed according to tesla that accounts for a 50 percent improvement in charge speeds like that's amazing like my car charges at 22 kilowatts Uh, the suspension is also being updated with fully adaptive damping 
what does this mean? Fully adaptive damping, giving it an ultra cushioned feel. So Tesla says the new upgrades to the S and the X will constantly adapt to driver behavior and indeed the road conditions, automatically softening the ride for more pronounced road inputs and firming it for more aggressive driving. Good work, Tesla. Incremental improvements. Some of those are big gains as well. Uh, well done to them. There's a new electric racing series coming. Not soon, but it's on the horizon. It's called Extreme E. And we know it's going to be a success because the man behind it, Alejandro Agag, the man behind Formula E, you know, if he sets his mind to it, it's going to happen. Extreme E has joined forces with a motorsport manufacturer called Spark Racing. Now, Spark are going to engineer, develop and assemble the all-new SUV for the off-road racing series. As you can imagine, Extreme E is an off-road series going to the most extreme places in the world. And their promise, if you like, the thing that they're all about is they will go and race electric cars in these places, but then they will leave them better than they found them. So if they're going to very hot places, very cold places, maybe places that are affected by global warming and ice caps melting, Yes, they'll go there, they'll draw attention to that area through press and publicity, and then there'll be a big campaign around the the race, the event, to leave the area better than they found it. Spark Racing Technology will create and construct the common package with strict specification parts. They'll hand over the framework to each team. That'll allow the competitors to then test and develop their own powertrain and their own bodywork. Well, prototype testing is scheduled to take place in July this year with founding partner Continental Tyres. The teams are receiving the first delivery of 12 cars from Spark Racing this time next year, actually March 2020. Teams will later have the opportunity to put the Extreme E cars through their paces with a collective group test next summer before hopping on the newly renovated RMS St Helena for the first race, which is going to be January 2021. Well, the luxury electric vehicle startup Lucid Motors today announced its uh, board of directors has appointed Peter Rawlinson as the CEO. Effective immediately, he will also retain his role as CTO, uh, where he's responsible for all of Lucid's design and engineering activities, including their first ever car, the Lucid Air Ultra Luxury Electric Sedan, says futurecar.com. Well, Rawlinson joined Lucid back in 2013 after working at Tesla. He was the VP of Vehicle Engineering and the Chief Engineer of the Model S project, working under Elon Musk. Prior to Tesla, he was Chief Engineer at Lotus and the Principal Engineer at Jaguar. Porsche are electrifying at an interesting rate. The next generation Porsche Boxster and Cayman full electric. It's only a matter of time before Porsche will electrify its core sports car, the 911. Not only that, it looks like the Boxster and Cayman are going to be getting a charging port as well, according to a new report from Autocar today. The uh, Stuttgart-based automaker has green-lit, green-lighted, uh, pure electric versions of entry-level sports cars, says Adrian from Auto1.com. Uh, Porsche chairman Oliver Bloom has revealed in an interview with Autocar the company's testing a pure electric 718. Uh, prototypes of that car working on a hybrid 718 as well. He went on to mention that they haven't made up their minds yet about whether the cars are going to be getting the plug-in hybrid treatment or a hybrid setup. The plan is to sell the Boxster, and the Cayman Pure EVs alongside electrified versions of those models. Uh, according to the same report, the entirely electric models uh, will switch to Porsche's new PPE platform, while the hybrid and plug-in versions are going to stick with the current underpinnings, albeit in an updated form that will allow a degree of electrification. Right, final story today, and this is from Daimler. Oh, Daimler? Choose your poison. Uh, Daimler Daimler says that the battery electric trucks they make are going to be key to zero emission commercial transport. Well, battery electric vehicles are the key, they say, in North America, uh, according to Daimler Trucks of North America. Moving forward with battery electric vehicle commercialization, contending that hydrogen fuel cells are not ready for prime time, says truckinginfo.com today. The road to emissions-free transportation is going to be driven with battery electric vehicles, says Roger Nielsen. He's the president and CEO of Daimler Trucks North America, speaking to a crowd assembled in Long Beach. Uh, he said, I believe the future is electric. The company announced it will begin converting its Portland manufacturing plant to produce electric freight liners uh, to enable a rapid scale-up of thoroughly tested and validated EVs, uh, it said in a press release today. Although Daimler Trucks of North America uh, vision 
is of EVs. They, they're saying that they're not excluding the idea of a fuel cell. Uh, they say, uh, or he said rather, Roger Nielsen said I, this, and I quote, I can see a glimpse of it over the horizon, but it will not be this generation of engineers who will be delivering it, end quote. So it's good. they've got their eyes open, they've got their open mind to any particular way in the future of using electric and hydrogen, a mix of both for commercial transport. That's not on the near term, though. They believe their future is pure electric trucks. Absolutely fascinating. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. We need to electrify commercial vehicles because they do so many more miles they're working vehicles and they tend to be diesels and stinkier but also they can rack up one two three four five hundred thousand miles in their lifetime you know your car and my car sit outside on the driveway in your garage on the street you know they they do a little bit of work but commercial vehicles if you can electrify as many miles as possible it's just going to be such a good thing for well for their bank balance because it's cheaper to run less maintenance and for the environment as well like just another day packed with really positive ev stories and a ton of stuff that i could this could be twice this could be an hour long this podcast nobody wants that let's face it there's so much stuff that i just don't get time uh, to bring you uh, kind of at the the periphery the fringes the other stories that i find interesting and that's why we add them to a, a bonus show at the weekend uh i must remember to do it every single weekend a bonus show for those exec producers on patreon uh, and above as well we also have our question of the week our community it's your bit of the show on a sunday i love reading these out you send me your answer i read them out on a sunday uh i might even start opening up voicemails or if you record a little thing on your voice recorder on your uh, your phone I might start that in a few weeks as well like um or like ryan does on his ride the lightning podcast i love that bit uh but for now it's me reading out your emails question of the week this week what's the dumbest thing you've ever heard about evs comes from our friends at myev.com they hear some dumb things uh so what's the dumbest thing you've ever heard about EVs. You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or what about the comment sections of of YouTube, because we put the audio on YouTube as well, or Facebook, or uh, myev.com. You can do it on those as well. Thank you to 218 patrons of this podcast. You keep me going. Uh, Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. If you're wondering what's it all about, no pressure, I'll make the show whatever. There are 452 previous shows. Blimey, how do we get to that number? I blinked and I've missed it. Uh, 452 shows online, uh, all fully indexed for search on my blog. If there's a story or a thing that I know you're researching or you're curious, uh, evnewsdaily.com is the place to go to. There's links on there to get the podcast in all those places. Uh, maybe you listen on the on on your phone, but you want it in a certain other place. Then just hit hit the blog. It's all on there. Evnewsdaily.com. If you have uh, any time to write a review on Apple iTunes, that would be amazing because it just goes so far. I think they call it social proof. People would see your review, uh, it, you know, one star, five star, hopefully good, and uh, people, oh, I'll, I'll have a listen to that. I'll download it. So it really helps pick up new subscribers. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>